in the military out of perpetual warfare in the military. This campaign is gaining ground because we listen to the American people and not just to wealthy campaign contributors. And you know, when you listen to the American people, you hear something very different than what appears on television or in the radio, on the radio. What you hear from working people is they can't make it on eight, nine, ten bucks an hour. And you know what? Nobody can make it on eight, nine, or ten bucks an hour, which is why together we are going to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. idea to say that if somebody works 40 hours a week, that person should not live in poverty. This campaign is listening to our veterans, and our veterans are telling us Veterans are telling us that they want and need the health care and the other benefits they were promised. And if I'm elected president, that is exactly what will happen. This campaign is listening to young people. And what young people are telling me is, how does it happen, why does it happen, that because they went out and got the best education they should, they could, they are ending up thirty, fifty thousand dollars in debt. People should not be punished and forced to pay off a debt for decades because they got an education. That's crazy. This is the year 2016. And when we talk about public education, it's simply not good enough to be talking about first grade through 12th grade. The world has changed. The economy has changed. People need more education. So when I talk about public education today, what I believe we should do is make public colleges and universities tuition free. Now, my critics say, well, Bernie, you know, you're Santa Claus, you're a nice guy, you're giving away all of this free stuff. You want to make public colleges and universities tuition free, you want to lower student debt. You're a nice guy, how are you going to pay for it? I will tell you how we pay for it. And this is, again, thinking outside of the box, outside of status quo thinking. Eight years ago, after Wall Street drove this country into the worst economic downturn in our modern history, Congress bailed them out. I believe we should impose a tax on Wall Street speculation.
When Wall Street was in trouble, they got bailed out. Now it is Wall Street's time to help the middle class. This campaign is listening to our senior citizens and disabled veterans. And what seniors are telling me is they cannot make it on eleven or twelve thousand dollars a year social security. And you know what? You do the arithmetic and they cannot make it on eleven or twelve thousand. Now, my Republican colleagues in the Senate, they want to cut Social Security. That is exactly the right response. You know why? I'll tell you why. A great nation is not judged by the number of millionaires and billionaires it has. It is judged by how it treats the weakest and most vulnerable people amongst us. And in that spirit, it is wrong that so many of our seniors cannot today afford their prescription drugs, cannot afford to keep their homes warm or cool, cannot buy the food they need. Now, the Republicans want to cut Social Security. I've got bad news for them. We are going to expand Social Security. This campaign is listening to women. What women are telling me is how does it happen in this country that they go to work and they end up making 79 cents on the dollar compared to men? And there is no economic rationale for that. That is simply old-fashioned sexism. I know that every man in this audience will stand with the women in the fight for pay equity. This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the African American community. tired. I am tired. You are tired of seeing on television unarmed people being shot. Now I have, I'm a former mayor. I'm a former mayor and I've worked with police departments in my own city and all over this country. The vast majority of police officers are honest, hardworking, and they have a very, very difficult job. But like any other public official, when a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. We need to demilitarize many local police departments. We need to make police departments look like the diversity of the communities they serve. In my state of Vermont, 
Here by New Hampshire and in states all over this country, we have a major crisis with heroin and opiate addiction. And we have got to recognize that in many respects, the war on drugs has been a failure. We have got to recognize that substance abuse and addiction is a health issue, not a criminal issue. dealing with addiction and substance abuse need treatment, not jails. Now, it turns out, it turns out that over the last 20, 30 years, millions of Americans have received criminal records for possession of marijuana. Now, scientists argue the pluses and minuses of marijuana, but right now, under the Federal Controlled Substance Act, marijuana is listed as a Schedule I drug alongside of heroin. Now, you could say whatever you want about marijuana, but it certainly is not heroin. And that is why I've introduced legislation that would take marijuana out of the Federal Control Substance Act. It is a, it is a, whether or not one legalizes marijuana is a state decision for states have chosen to do that, but I believe that possession of marijuana should not be a federal crime. This, this campaign is listening to our Latino brothers and sisters. This campaign, this campaign is telling Donald Trump and others that we will not, we will not accept for one second their bigotry and xenophobia.